Oh, this will wake you up in the morning. Oh, I can't believe I made this at home. Hey, I'm Abhinaya from BuzzFeed India. Hey everyone, I'm Godfrey and today I've challenged my friend Abhinaya from BuzzFeed India to only make Filipino meals for the day. And today I'm challenging Godfrey to make Indian meals for a day. This should be interesting. There's going to be new ingredients, new spices, so hopefully I do Indian people proud and get these dishes right. The dishes I'm getting Godfrey to cook today are First for breakfast, we have dosa and coconut chutney, my absolute favorite from my home state, Tamil Nadu. For the second dish, we have most of India's favorite dish, the biryani. The two Filipino dishes I've challenged Abhinaya to make today are, for breakfast, she's gonna be making tortang talong, which is basically an eggplant or aubergine omelet. For dinner, she's gonna be making tinolong menok, which is a chicken soup. I hope she can get through it, and I know she will. So what are we waiting for, Armi Klangla? The recipe for the eggplant omelette couldn't be any easier. First of all, you want to find a decent sized eggplant, poke some holes in with it, and then you want to pop it in the oven and broil it for about 15 minutes. I can do that in the microwave, but I think the stove would be easier to do. Once it's done, you want to take it out and start peeling off the skin. Place it on a tray and you want to slowly squish the eggplant. Not too thin, you want to kind of keep it like a quarter of an inch. This is too hard. I think I might have messed this up a little bit. I'm not sure if I'm doing this right, but just keep going, just keep going. Then you want to get a couple of eggs into a shallow tray, add some salt and pepper to season, and then once that's whisked, you want to dip your eggplant into that. If you want to add a bit more flavor, you can also add some garlic into the pan before you put the eggplant in. Just saute those with garlic just to add a bit more flavor. Then once it's ready, you can pop your eggplant that's been dipped in your egg into that tray and cook it on both sides. And there you go, it's so simple, the recipe. You can enjoy it with rice or with some salad, but trust me, with some rice is the best. So the concept of having eggplant with rice, because we don't have rice for breakfast, so it's completely new for me. So I'm really excited and curious about how that's gonna turn out. The eggplant and the rice is cooked to perfection. This tastes so good. The smoky flavor of the eggplant with the rice adds such a gourmet flavor to it. I can't believe I made this at home. I think it's the perfect way to sneak some vegetables into your system if you're like me. Like I'm 26 and I still don't take my vegetables seriously. So if you are like me, then I highly recommend you to try this one. I love it. For those who are not familiar, dosa is a crispy, savory, crepe-like kind of a dish. It is typically served with coconut chutney, which kind of complements the savory flavor of the dosa. What I'm going to start off with is the coconut chutney. For the coconut chutney, here's what you need to do. Take some grated coconut, roasted chana dal, green chilies, ginger, salt and water. Toss all of them in a blender or mixer. Blend everything until it's smooth and creamy. And remember, the more water you add, the runnier the chutney is going to be. So until unless you want some coconut chutney soup, go ahead. I mean, it's blended. It's just not watery enough. Go again, add some more water. Once your chutney is blended, transfer it to a serving bowl. We are going to add some tempering to the chutney. Heat up some oil in a pan and add mustard seeds, curry leaves and dry red chilli. Let them splutter and then pour the tempering over the chutney. And there you go, your coconut chutney is ready. Now that I've made my coconut chutney, it's time to make the dosas. If you've never had dosa in your life, you are in for a treat. Making the dosa batter from scratch is going to be quite hectic for Godfrey. So I asked him to get some ready-made batter, which is also going to be hectic, I feel. For the dosa, heat up a non-stick pan and pour a ladle full of batter onto the center of the pan. Spread the batter in a circular motion to make a thin pancake. Oh! Okay, change of tactic. I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. I can do it, I can make a dosa, I can make a dosa. Come on, I can make a dosa. Once the dosa is well cooked, fold the dosa in half and serve hot with chutney. It smells great. I tried, I know it's not as smooth as it can be, but I'm sure it'll taste great. Cheers. Mmm, mmm. It's like a savory pancake. This is delicious. I could eat that by itself. I think a coconut chutney. Mm. Oh, this will wake you up in the morning. Oh, I don't know what I like more, either the chutney or the dosa, but together they are amazing. You know when you have to work hard for breakfast, but it's all worth it in the end. 
Doses are great, nice and crunchy and soft as well at the same time. I'm gonna probably eat the rest of the doses with this because this is amazing. It is what you have on a regular basis in India. I am super jealous. Oh gum. Oh gum. Oh, today's gonna be a good day. Tenolong Manok is basically a chicken soup with all these leafy greens. It's one of those comfort dishes that we have in the Philippines and it's super simple to make. First off, you want to get a pot and heat up some oil in there. Once the oil is a bit hot, you want to saute your onion, garlic and ginger and add in some black pepper in there too. When the onions start to get soft, then you can add your chicken in there. Cook them for about five minutes or until they turn a bit brown. Now that the chicken's got to cook, you want to add your water in there. Let that boil for about 40 minutes so it cooks the chicken thoroughly. After that, you will see that there's some nastiness, some fat and some oil on the top of the soup you want to get rid of that and discard it after that you want to add your chicken stock cube and then your papaya to the mix cover that and let it cook for another five minutes put the malonga and hot pepper leaves in the pot and pour the fish sauce in as well and let that cook for another two minutes and then once that's all in there let that cook for another two minutes and then after that the dish is ready to be served i hope you enjoy this highly nutritious meal and it's, it's a soup you can't really get it wrong <laughs> look at that this is just so perfect for the bangalore weather bangalore is hot right now but it does get chilly at night i think this is just a pure bowl of comfort right there because it is so warm i want to cuddle in my blanket and then you know just sleep for the next 10 hours. There are like different textures going on in the soup. I love it. I think this has great flavors, great seasoning. Love the textures. Thank you for introducing me to this dish. I think I'm definitely gonna make this again. Approved. Making chicken biryani is like putting together a puzzle. Instead of pieces, you're gonna put together spices and ingredients. But trust me, when you finish the puzzle, it's all going to be worth it. The first step is to get the chicken marinated. Add some ginger garlic paste, curd, salt, turmeric, red chilli powder, biryani masala and lemon juice to the chicken and give it a good mix. Let it sit for an hour and let those flavours sink in. While the chicken is soaking up, let's get our rice ready. Wash and soak the basmati rice for 30 minutes. Now add some oil and ghee to the pressure cooker. Oh, I've never used ghee before in my life. Add in the whole spices, which is the bay leaf, cardamom, cloves and cinnamon. Add in the finely chopped onions and let them cook until they are golden brown. The smell at this point should be heavenly. Oh, fragrant! Ooh. Now it's time to add in the star of the show, the marinated chicken. Cook it until it's halfway done, letting those flavours infuse and melt together. Smelling good, I'm so hungry. I know I ate a lot for breakfast, but I'm looking forward to this biryani. Add in some mint leaves, green chilli, chilli powder, curd, biryani masala and salt. Mix it all up and let the chicken soak up those flavours. Next, it's time to add in our soaked and drained basmati rice and 3 cups of water. Close the pressure cooker and let it cook for one whistle. Do not open it until the steam goes down. This step is crucial and I'm damn serious when I say leave her alone. Oh, this is my biryani. Uh, if I did it too long, or I didn't do it long enough, either way, the rice has come a bit mushy. It's not flaky whatsoever, look. So we'll just mush. I'm sorry, India. I've let you down. Here is my chicken biryani. I feel like it will taste nice, but the, just the texture. I know when the texture of the rice is off. Here is my first bit of biryani. It is definitely too much. I just couldn't tell. Oh, <coughs> woo! Spice, yo. Oh, I like that spice, though. Oh, but let's try the chicken. It's definitely cooked. Mmm. Oh man, the flavors are there. It is tasty. You got the spice. You got the chicken. So you got the flavors. Then this is delicious. There's some good stuff. Thank you, Abinaya, uh, for showing me a biryani recipe. Mmm. -mm. Good food. Great flavors. One happy guy. I honestly don't know how I did this challenge but I definitely feel really good today. The eggplant omelet was surprising and the soup oh my god. It was really tough but I really enjoyed it and the food was absolutely delicious. The dosa oh my god I really want to have this for breakfast again. I thank Abhinaya for showing me these dishes and I really enjoyed it. I know it was challenging but I tried my best. Please let me know in the comments below if I have messed up or if you have any recipes that we should swap because we are always up for food. Oh, 
एंड डोंट फर्गेट टू सब्सक्राइब टू बस्पीड यू